This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and today we have a Zenith AM FM radio from probably the late 1940s. And we're going to open this thing up and see if we can persuade it to work. Here's the underside of a chassis. It looks pretty much all original, as best I can tell. The only thing I see is this blue lead here looks like a replacement and it appears that someone has jumped the off on switch uh, I think I remember the person who owns this telling me that the off on switch was bad and had been jumped but we're not going to worry about that right now once we get the radio working we'll try to obtain another switch and worst case scenario we'll just have to add an inline switch on the power cord but you know that's really the least of my worries so right now let's fire this up and see what we're up against here we are on AM very weak that's with the volume wide open brought to you by Geico 15 minutes can save you 15 percent or more right us knife was placed on okay let's try FM I bet it's gonna be dead as a doornail Maybe not. Well, actually, FM is better than AM. Individuals to manage. Yes, could be. Okay, well, that's a good sign. Now, this selenium rectifier was rather warm for the brief period of time that I had the radio on, so it will be replaced. But just for the heck of it, before we replace that, let's see what kind of B-plus output we have. It could very well be low, and that could be the, that could be the determining factor in this radio not working right. Now when I flip the power switch on the voltage will surge up and then as the set warms up and the tubes start to conduct the voltage will drop back down. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it's dropping like a rock. That should be about 100 and, between 120 and 130 volts there under load. So yeah, that rectifier is going to have to be replaced, and I bet the longer it stays on, the voltage will probably continue to drop. That seems to be a common problem with these old selenium rectifiers. Yeah, see, we're below 100 volts now. Carbohydrate and protein. Here we are with a new diode and dropping resistor in place, and we're running about 128 volts B plus. That is an important source of energy. For the resistor, I went with a 60 ohm, and the way I accomplished that was putting two 120 ohm 2 watt resistors in parallel. That gives us 60 ohm 4 watt, and that should be enough power handling capacity to handle this. Our performance has improved a little bit. The, the AM is still lacking. So, we'll proceed. Probably need to get rid of all of these waxies now and see what that does for us. And we've started the waxy replacement process. 
and as much as I'd like to attach the new capacitors directly to the terminals in which the old capacitor was removed, like we did here, sometimes that's not always possible because the leads on the new capacitors are not long enough. And when that's the case, we have to do what we did here. We have to attach to the existing leads, insulate everything, and then slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over the solder joint. That way there's no chance of anything shorting out, and that's about as neat as you can get without actually soldering on to the terminals in which the old capacitor was removed from. And I'll be doing a similar method on all of these that are attached to fragile tube socket pins and coils and what have you. I think it'd be much safer just to clip out the old capacitor and attach it to the pigtail leads that are left behind instead of trying to unsolder directly from the tube socket or coil or whatever. Okay, we ran into a little situation. One of the capacitors that we need to replace is a point triple zero five. That's point zero 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 five microfarad. Now well, the lowest value I have is point zero zero one microfarad. So how do we get around this problem? Well, it's simple. We take two point zero zero ones wire them in series, that halves the, halves the capacitance, and we're reading 493 picofarad. That's very close to 500 picofarad, or point triple zero five microfarad. Okay, I replaced all of the paper capacitors, which I'll admit was not an easy job in this set. In fact, my work looks a little sloppy, but sometimes you do it the way you have to do it when they have everything packed up like a rat bed. And I touched up the alignment on the AM broadcast band, and it works better now. California, Tennessee, I also replaced the speaker out of one that I salvaged from an old record player. South Korea, it's been destroyed. In Cabot, Pennsylvania... I am running... You're a sinner. We die because we're sinners. It's one of the labs determined that. No fair and balanced. Let's see what we got on FM. Senators were ready to wait and the vote. Okay, well that ought to about do it. I didn't have any luck finding a power switch, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wire an inline switch on the power cord, and that will be it. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching, and more to come later. Another one from the pile saved. Okay, not quite the end. As with many of my other videos, there's always an afterthought. Well, the afterthought here was I wasn't quite happy with the AM performance on this set, so I did a little more checking, and I found this uh, flaky 12BE6 AM converter tube. At first, the emission read way down, then it miraculously jumped up, 
and the grid emission, aka gas, was excessive. So I replaced the converter tube, and it seems to be working much better now. There they are. Whatever. The guy who created the show, he and me. Well, our 670 has gone off the air, our week station, but I was getting that earlier. Independent film festivals say that there was a an NBA basketball team that was known for their cocaine. And there we go. Yeah, this metal dial scale is vibrating a little bit. And testing and all these things. Um, Katrina says, I personally think we should call. Okay, I think that's about it. We can put it back together and send it back home. Um, only thing I'm going to do is install an inline switch on the power cord. And I don't have to show you that. That's self-explanatory. Okay, thanks for watching. And I'm, I'm done this time.